Hello, welcome or welcome back to Sapling Tarot. My name is Imogen. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a chatty tag that was started by Moonflower Moments here on YouTube about the decks that made me believe in tarot. I thought this was such an interesting question to pose and um, I thought that it was well, it's quite a nice prompt to, yeah, talk about, like, interesting or meaningful, like, tarot experiences, which is the sort of thing that I'm really fascinated to hear about for people, um, whether you've been doing it for 50 years or, like, I don't know, five weeks. I think all of our stories are so different and the way that you get into tarot can vary wildly and I think there's there's so many differences in terms of how we approach tarot and when we say we believe in tarot what it even is that we mean so yeah I thought this would be really fun um so the first deck I have to show you is uh, here it's my oldest deck so this has been shown well <laughs> all three of these decks have been shown um a lot on my channel already because yeah I mean if you're talking about decks that made you believe in tarot it would only make sense that you probably <laughs> that you know they're decks that you have a, a good connection with um so yeah this is my oldest deck I've had this um deck for as long as I've had a tarot practice um it is the Osho Zen tarot it's a very 90s deck and it was the deck that was used for the first reading I ever received, um, which was by a very beloved neighbour uh, where we used to live. And yeah, the reading that she did for me was a Celtic cross spread and then of sort of like your life at the moment or like how things are going um it was kind of like I don't know it got very deep very quickly as tarot can be wont to do um and I was really young um in hindsight I probably wouldn't do a reading for someone that was the age that I was at that point um but it, it was really impactful for me. She also did a past lives reading, which I have, I remember it being three cards. <laughs> and I remember what she told me. I don't remember which cards it was. I remember a lot of the, the first spread, but I don't remember. I think I maybe just got a bit sort of, not overwhelmed, but yeah, I was like paying more attention to her than I was to the cards at that point. And yeah, it was amazing. I've like looked for that spread ever since, um, like a three card past life spread. It wasn't something that I like necessarily believed in at that point, um, but she really did. And I just thought that she was so cool. Well, she is so cool. Um, and she's a sociologist and a psychologist and a scientist but then there was like this other side to her which at that point I thought was kind of incongruous and now that you know I know more tarot readers I know that actually it's it's quite common <laughs> there are quite a lot of us out here that are kind of equal parts science and spirituality and the blending between the two of them and that's like one of my favourite things about like this I don't know corner of, of tarot tube and like the sort of witchy spaces that I exist in is that people contain so many multitudes <laughs> as opposed to a few multitudes I guess that's a bit arbitrary but yeah so it, that was the first reading that I ever had uh, she read for my mum, it was so sort of a really lovely thing and I was just absolutely captivated and so I asked for a copy of this deck. Um, I didn't really know 
that there were other tarot decks or that this was... I didn't realise that this is kind of a variation on the Smithwaite system. I didn't know anything about tarot. Uh, it never really clicked in my head. I didn't know for years and years that the tarot that I did had like links with <laughs> the tarot of kind of like fortune tellers that you see on TV and in films and stuff. Um, that only clicked like I in the last I don't know five or six years <laughs> to kind of like look up from this deck and to look around and see what else was out there. Um, so yeah, so for the first, I don't know, more than 10 years of my practice, this was my only deck. And this was the deck that I have had the most kind of like uncanny readings with it you know, whether you believe in it or not, like it, it kind of ended up predicting some pretty monumental things that happened in like mine and my friends' lives. Um, it, I don't know, it's, it's that, that thing, isn't it? That like, I wasn't really a believer per se. I wasn't particularly spiritual. I wasn't, I couldn't have explained to you why or how it works, but it, it did. And, uh, you know, every time I would get the deck out to the point where I sort of wouldn't pull it out uh, flippantly, I, you know, I'd read any chance I really got, but it got to the point where it had kind of predicted so many things and it had so many kind of uncanny moments that um, <laughs> I kind of stopped. Um, being quite so eager to get it out because it was kind of getting a little bit creepy um, and like you know some of the artwork in this is quite confronting I've taken out a couple of cards um, but you know some of it is still <laughs> is still very confronting and it's yeah like some of the words the book is quite a lot it's um yeah, it's a fucking weird deck, it's a product of its time, it's a product of its creator, who is a very problematic individual, or a pair of individuals, um, and, but it has, like, a lot of meaning to me, and, yeah, so this was what kind of cracked the door open, I suppose, for being more accepting. And more open to this kind of, I don't know, the parts of the world that can't necessarily be explained by science. Um, and then I had a therapist that was like really into chakras, which then led me on to like astrology, and then I ended up circling back to tarot. And it, you know, but I think that this was at the age that I was at the time even if I wouldn't do that now, like it's, yeah, it was what kind of like cracked the door open for me to believe in anything. And you know, I don't know what exactly it is that I believe <laughs> that tarot is or tarot does. Like I can explain it to you in the sense of statistics and the, the pictures and the archetypes. And you know, I can explain it to you in a very secular and psychological self-development kind of way. I can't tell you how it does the predictive thing. Uh, you know, I can talk to you about like the collective unconscious and all of that, but you know, I can't, I can't fully explain it. So I don't know exactly what it is that I believe, but whatever it is, this was the, the first deck that made me believe it. Okay, so because I'm only showing you three decks, I thought this was going to be a really short video and I was a bit like, oh, is it even worth like filming? I've already been nattering for 10 minutes. Apparently I have enough to say. <laughs> so the next deck is in this very sexy, I need to put this in a proper pouch, but this bag, it's a rice bag. 
um, it, this is the deck's home now, and so every time I think about putting it in like a nice pouch, because I have spare nice pouches, um, I always go, no, but this deck lives in the rice bag. Um, it's also like it had perfume on it at one point, and so it still smells really good. Um, so yeah, this is another, this could also be like a disheveled decks um, video. This is cool. Like, I'm not even a riffle shuffler, but we've got a, a pretty warped deck. Uh, this is the Universal Weight. This is my preferred uh, Smith Weights clone, um, in the sense of like really, really sticking to Pixie's artwork. I think it's been like kind of redrawn, uh, but just with like the softer line work because basically just like from a visual processing standpoint I find the original quite hard to read um and yeah I just prefer the kind of like pencil-y colours in this yeah so this was the first deck that I started reading actually that's not true this isn't the deck it would be my original one um which is like right at the back of a shelf, uh, so we're going to use this as a placeholder. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So, scratch all of that about the universal weight. We're talking about the um, the original Rider Waite Smith with Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork um, and the chunky, chunky black lines and um, the ugly turquoise cup backs uh, rather than these nice starry ones. So, pretend that that's what I'm showing you. Um, so all that is to say, that was the first tarot deck that I got when I decided to look up from the Yoshi Zen and to find, you know, the tarot deck that you see in the movies. And it was the deck that I used when I first started thinking about reading professionally and like doing readings for friends and for people that I didn't know as well. And because I didn't, I didn't really want to use the Osho Zen one for page readings because, yeah, confronting is like the nicest way <laughs> to put that tech. It's like heavy duty. Um, I don't know if I was like ready to try and explain my way through that with people I didn't know. Um, so I got a Smithwaite and I didn't love it because I don't love the like overtly Christian imagery, uh, you know, everyone's very like skinny and white and, and all of those sorts of things. I was like, ah, it's not quite right, but I've, you know, I think people are more okay with that because it's like an old deck, um, which doesn't make it okay. I'm just throwing that out there, like it wasn't okay then, um, it's not okay now, but, um, you know, it's the most recognisable imagery. And so I thought that this was like the deck to, to deck to start with. And also like I was reading books and doing courses and stuff. And so this was the imagery that I was getting used to rather than the fucking weird world of the Osho Zen. And yeah, so this is a good example of why I, I have hands, um, of why I like this one instead of the original one is that you can actually see what's happening in his cloak like you can see the grapes and stuff whereas that's all just like black splodges in the um the original one I digress so this was the deck that I started using for people when I didn't know the ins and outs of their life because I think if you're reading for friends and you're reading for family um and things come true or weird stuff comes up in a reading that you're like how could I possibly know that you can kind of convince yourself that it's because of what you already knew about their situation um I think particularly so I am an autistic person who was raised as a girl and so there were certain expectations of you know social abilities and stuff and so observing people observing patterns and behaviours and stuff has been a lifelong special interest slash survival skill um, and so I kind of convinced myself that the reason that I was good at tarot was because of that and because I'd been able to sense 
these things about people and their lives because of this skill that I'd gained over a lifetime of <laughs> struggling to human. Um, and so when I started reading for other people that I didn't know their life so well with this deck, that was where I was just like, well, maybe it's all going to fall apart now. If I don't know the internet of their lives, then of course I'm not going to be able to read their story in the cards, um, you know, not having the prior knowledge. And so I read for a few people that I knew, kind of. So like friends of friends, people that I knew, but like didn't know about what they were asking me about. Um, so like, you know, their home life or their uh, work life or stuff that like I didn't talk to them about um, and the readings were good <laughs> and it was that kind of eye-opening moment like the sort of step beyond the previous deck of fuck me maybe I can do this <laughs> um, and you know it was turning over the cards so in the um, the Osho Zen when I was a teenager like I remember turning over cards um, I've always been a big Celtic cross person and for me the well, the way that I learned it was like the middle card is the person in the situation so like you as you are at the moment um, and on like a number of occasions I would turn over a card that had a symbol on it that would be like representative of someone's name <laughs> um, and stuff like that and moving away from that imagery I thought well, that's not going to happen because you know this is kind of historical it's weird it's well it's weird to us now in terms of like contemporary modern life how likely is that going to happen and then it still happened <laughs> uh people's names or people's partners or um you know like astrological correspondences so you know this me turning over like this is you and it being you know strength card and you're a leo and like that kind of stuff like that that happens and stuff that I didn't know about about people would come up in a reading um you know stuff that they hadn't told me stuff that truly really wasn't any of my business uh which is the slightly weird thing about reading for like family and friends um or like friends of friends or like people you don't know that well yet and you know fuck me it's a really good way to like speed run a relationship and like foster that kind of intimacy because suddenly you know all of their business um and so yeah so that that happened with well not this deck as we discussed uh the original Rider weight deck and yeah this was the deck where i was just like okay maybe maybe we've got something here um, the final deck that i want to show you is in this cloth and <laughs> this deck really has seen better days at this point um what was I saying about disheveled decks? Um, word to the wise, this kind of like slightly plasticky linen cardstock, um, I, for some reason, despite knowing that it is in fact a paper product, um, really thought that this would be okay in the rain. <laughs> Dear reader, it was not okay in the rain. I think we did it, you know, nothing's looking too puffy all like bent out of shape but um I could probably still find you the cards that were in, <laughs> that were in the reading uh, that I did the other day in the rain um this is the Tower of the Divine this is the deck that I've been using for client readings um pretty much ever since I got it for I don't know what three years or something um and yeah so this deck well I mean it must be my most used deck by a considerable margin because of the amount of readings I've done at like events and stuff um so it's seen me through like hundreds and hundreds of people none of whom I knew <laughs> none of whom I had any sense of who they were what they did what their life was like um and it's done the uncanny thing it's done the like the spooky weird details thing of the you know astrological symbolism or the you know sometimes like it looks like them or looks like someone they know or the because this did i say what deck this was i can't remember the tower of the divine by yoshi yoshitani my working deck that i never shut up about it 
but um, yeah, because all of the cards have stories and folklore attached to them, some people know, some people don't, uh, they're from all around the world. I, I don't know, I'd say it was 50-50 on the ones that I knew before I got the deck and the ones that I didn't. Yeah, so these stories mean a lot to people and so sometimes they will recognise the story in the cards and it will have some sort of like special significance to them. And beyond like the really like creepy detail thing, it, oh, it's a fucking good reader. And it does the weird, the weird thing where it shows people their lives in the cards and like what they need to do about it and where things are headed, where they've been, all that kind of stuff. And so this is like the graduation of, from people I knew like really well, to people I knew a little bit, to people that I don't know from Adam, you know, and that is amazing. And I think like the additional thing for this card, this deck is that I suppose a little bit for the right away there was one reading that I did for that where they did the like not telling you anything before the reading <laughs> which I'm just gonna throw it out there if you are on the you know out there to be like on the receiving end of a tarot reading you can tell people stuff you get the most in my opinion my very very humble opinion you get the most out of a tarot reading if you meet the reader halfway if you let them know if they're on the right track, if you let them know that what they're saying doesn't quite apply to your situation, if you give a bit of context, because we are kind of flying blind. Like there are millions, I, and I mean, I, I cannot express to you, and you know, you as a tarot tube viewer, you know this, I cannot express to you the number of possible combinations of tarot cards there are. And beyond that, the number of possible meanings <laughs> of every combination and permutation and even within each combination or permutation, the context for the querent could be entirely different. I could pull the same three cards for ten different people and those three cards would mean different things to each of those ten people depending on the question and depending on their life and depending on like where they're at in their head right now and so to do the kind of tight-lipped thing if you're nervous I totally get it but like there are a lot of people out there who they love to test a reader <laughs> they love a you know oh what's your name you tell me and it's just like oh well it's your own time you're wasting <laughs> like, it's your own money you're wasting if you don't get anything out of this because you don't give me anything to work with then like you've already given me your money <laughs> Like, this is jokes on you, mate. It's, um, and so this has been the deck that I've read for the most skeptics and the most kind of stony, silent people who give you nothing. And then, you know, sometimes they just get up and walk away and you don't know if you got it right or not. And you just have to kind of let it go. At other times, the facade kind of cracks and you see that you've absolutely nailed it and they're actually a little bit frightened and look, I'm not gonna say that that's a delicious feeling because that would be unkind and ungenerous to people and maybe I would have been like that at one point I'd like to think I wouldn't have been because it is a bit of a dick move um but it is quite satisfying to know that it works even if they don't believe it you know it still does the thing it, it does <laughs> um and that you know when i'm feeling scared that my brain is turning to mush and that my memory is leaking out of my ears and that i won't be able to do this um i remember that i've read for people who i mean arguably like didn't want to be read for but like i don't know I've had a lot of people buy readings as a joke, which is really fun for everyone involved. And I've done the thing because it's what I've been paid to do and it's ended up working anyway. And so if you can do a reading in that kind of environment, then I reckon you're all right. <laughs> so yeah, so this is, I suppose it's what this has been is more of a, the tarot decks that made me believe in myself. Um, 
but also believe in the tarot because it's like increasing difficulty <laughs> taking away the card rails and it's worked out anyway so yeah that's my my three decks that made me believe i've been watching too much x-files recently so i apologize if the title and or thumbnail has got some kind of x-files reference in it um i would absolutely love to hear your answers in the comments in a vr um if you do a vr do tag me because i'm just cannot wait to hear more people's answers to this this is so cool uh great stuff to talk about i hope you're taking really good care of yourself uh if you enjoyed this video you could give it a like uh you could even consider subscribing if you want to see more nattery chattery videos like this um yeah hope you're taking really good care of yourself and i will catch you in the next one bye